World Championship Wrestling had the Hogans, Stings, and Savages to help them temporarily move ahead in the Monday Night War for rating supremacy, sure. But the role of the revolutionary cruiserweights in capturing viewers' attention cannot be underplayed. A sizable chunk of the division came from Mexico, with Eric Bischoff signing up many previously unknown to fans north of the border luchadors and letting them run wild on TV. These aerial artists added much to WCW's mid-card scene and made shows like Nitro and Thunder the home for cutting-edge wrestling at the time. Their impact is still felt in the wrestling style of today, and without them, the industry would look very different indeed. I'm Adam Pacisi from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 best WCW luchadors. Join us! Number 10, Hector Garza. Young, handsome, high-flying sensation Hector Garza actually worked for WCW's competition first, before WWE's working relationship with Mexican promotion AAA ended, and Garza ended up heading to Ted Turner's organization instead. To stand out from the packed cruiserweight crowd, Hector unleashed his breathtaking corkscrew plancher, which, even in a time of rampant innovation, looked seriously special. He didn't win any gold whilst in WCW, but he routinely thrilled with his car crash theatrics and became a fast favourite of WCW announcer Mike Tanay, a noted booster of the luchadors, who continually talked up his talents and potential on commentary. His most famous victory, perhaps, was a fluke win over Scott Hall, which sadly wasn't capitalised on. The bad guy got his win back in emphatic fashion just a couple of weeks later. Fluid, consistent, and did I mention handsome? Garza had great showings against anyone, whether he was battling someone like William Regal for the television title, or playing his part in one of those eminently enjoyable Lucha Libre six-man tags. After recovering from several knee injuries, he was released by WCW in October of 1999, due to cost-cutting and rejoined AAA. Number 9. Cyclope Formerly known as Halloween while gaining traction for AAA in the first half of the 90s, Cyclope was one of many who left the Mexican promotion for WCW in 1996. Truth be told, he didn't have too many of what you would call outstanding moments. He didn't have the big program or feud or cruiserweight title pay-per-view match. His role was the same as many others of his kind, to put on an entertaining mid-car car crash, usually in multi-man match scenarios, or otherwise put over another bigger star. Cyclope did both of these really well and looked cool as hell while doing it. Seriously, the luchadors all had decent clobber, but how boss does this horned one-eye wonder look? Ironically, Cyclope's biggest WCW moment was when the man himself wasn't under the mask, but rather Dean Malenko, who revealed himself as the man behind the hood to a shell-shocked Chris Jericho at Slamboree 1998. Cyclope was underrated for sure, along with frequent tag partner Damian666, and his is worth keeping an eye out for <laughs> if you go back and watch any of the old Cruiserweight stuff. Number 8. Super Calo Look, anyone who has a pair of sunglasses and a turned back cap sewn into their mask design deserves to be on this list. Hell, any list. Hell, every list. The Super One didn't have the most interesting character, or any character really, at least not in WCW, and he wasn't exactly immune to mistakes. Alright, sometimes he botched like the bastard love child of Sabu and Sin Cara, but you could not take your eyes off him, even if you were worried that he was going to break his skull open while attempting some Something crazy. Super Calo had a willingness to put his body through pain and take incredible risks the way that few others were willing to. He would launch himself through the ropes with a flipping suicide dive, taking out his opponent, himself, and whatever fans weren't quick enough to get out of the way, while also trying out other reckless moves, some of which didn't exactly come off. But the effort was there, and the second generation star certainly added to the cruiserweight division while he was around. Number 7, Chavo Guerrero Jr. Truth be told, Chavo Guerrero Jr. probably wasn't quite ready when he first signed a deal with WCW. William Regal had made him look good in a tryout match, and WCW probably just thought, well, he's a friggin' Guerrero, so why wouldn't he be an incredible wrestler? Thankfully, after finding his feet on the undercard, Charvito proved to be good value and a sound investment on the company's part. He really came into his own during his feud with Uncle Eddie, which allowed him to show off his personality a bit more. Pepe the hobby horse, anyone? After that, he became a linchpin of the company's cruiserweight division, winning the title twice. He also won the WCW tag 
tag titles once. Growing in confidence as a worker, Guerrero played his part in some of the company's best bouts in its dying days. His performances against the likes of Billy Kidman, Shane Helms, and Rey Mysterio Jr. showed that he was a talent for the future, and it's no surprise that WWE snapped him up and soon gave him a push alongside Latino Heat. Number 6. Conan Conan was a major star in wrestling before he ever got to WCW, headlining for both of Mexico's top promotions, CMLL and AAA. He dipped his foot into the American market in the early 90s with WCW and then had an ill-fated spell in WWE as the original Max Moon before he returned to Turner Town in 96. Though he crossed paths with his contemporaries on the undercard, Conan was typically positioned far higher and, owing to his size, didn't compete for the Cruiserweight title, but was rather in the mix for the United States, TV and tag team titles, all of which he won. Something of a locker room leader for the Luchador contingent, K-Dog helped them fight for better representation and opportunities with management, and used his pull as a member of the NWO to ensure that his countrymen weren't forgotten about. Was Conan the best wrestler on the roster? Far from it, but he was over, entertaining, and accomplished on the mic. People liked him for his character and charisma, not his hurricane ranas and head scissors, and his fellow luchadors were thankful to him for using his position to help them. Number 5. La Parca In a sea of masked men, La Parca stood out thanks to his unique appearance and comedic stylings. While the rest of the crew flew around at will, Parker often acted as the base for their innovative moves, standing tall and strong and selling them ex Expertly. It was an, at times, thankless task, but the chairman of WCW got over on his own by innovatively implementing the household object. He would play air guitar with it, stand on it and pretend to surf, use it as a launching pad for his own attacks, and, well, twat people with it too. Which might not be innovative, but it sure is effective. Leparka spent time tagging with Psychosis, and while they weren't exactly threatening the top teams in the tag title hunt, they were plenty fun to watch and, well, they just looked cool, didn't they? Strutting around the ring with glee, La Parker wasn't one to take to the skies too often, but he had it in his locker as well as a plethora of other tricks. Like turning into Diamond Dallas Page, for example. Number 4. Juventu Guerrera Second generation sensation Juventu Guerrera was earning rave reviews south of the border while he was still in his teens, his matches with Rey Mysterio Jr. being considered some of the very best of the era. That match then made its way to ECW in Japan before WCW called upon Hoovy to join joined their cruiserweight crew. His obvious talents made him a fan favourite, while his finisher, the stunning 450 splash, set him apart. His big moment arrived on the debut episode of Thunder in January of 1998, when he beat Ultimo Dragon to win the cruiserweight title for the first time. He dropped it to Mysterio a week later and then lost his mask not too long after that to Chris Jericho, but mask or no mask, the Juice's performances remained consistently high and he often stole the show. A perfect example is his barn-burning bout with Blitzkrieg, which kicked off 1999's Spring Stampede pay-per-view and set the bar so high that nobody else could follow it. Before his own giant ego got in the way of his success, Hoovy was a special talent and one of the true highlights of any show that he was booked on. Number 3. Psychosis Like his one-time roommate and fellow Mexical, Juventud Guerrera, Psychosis came to attention first in Mexico, then in ECW, and then Japan, thanks to his own series of awe-inspiring matches with Rey Mysterio Jr. His first WCW appearance was a quick loss to Conan at Clash of the Champions, but months later at the infamous 1996 Bash at the Beach, he got to show exactly what he was capable of when going toe-to-toe -to -toe with his favourite opponent. After Rocking the house with Ray Jr., Psychosis continued to have belters with Ultimo Dragon, Dean Malenko, and others before forming a team with La Parker and joining the short lived LWO stable. Psychosis was never pushed as the face or mask of the cruiserweight division, but he was an ever present and always delivered between the ropes, though he often flew over the top of them. He never quite got the respect his ability deserved and suffered both the indignation of losing two titles he never actually won, as well as having his mask taken off him. His one proper cruiserweight title reign clocked in at barely a week, but the lack of gold doesn't take away from the countless thrilling matches that he participated in. Number 2. Eddie Guerrero Eddie Guerrero's WCW arrival predated most of the rest of the luchadors, with the well-travelled Latino Heat coming in alongside Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko thanks to a talent trading agreement between New Japan and Eric Bischoff's organisation. Signed to be a workhorse and provide excitement in the midcard, Guerrero's talent was 
was never in question, but in all honesty, it took a while for his personality and charisma to truly shine through. Turning heel after a couple of years working as a babyface, Eddie was a performer transformed and quickly set his sights on cruiserweight division domination. His matches against Dean Malenko and Chris Jericho were top draw, but his series with Mysterio took things to another level entirely. Their mask versus title show stealer at 1997's Halloween Havoc in particular showed why both men were top talents regardless of their weight class or wrestling style. Sadly, Eddie's momentum was stalled due to a serious car crash that almost ended his career in early 99. When he returned many months later, WCW was already looking like it wasn't long for the world, though, as always, the former Cruiserweight Champions matches were always ones to savor even if his booking left a lot to be desired. Number 1. Rey Mysterio Jr. When Rey Mysterio first walked into the WCW locker room in Baltimore, Maryland, ahead of his debut at the 1996 Great American Bash pay-per-view, many of the wrestlers thought that he was a lost child. When they realized that this skinny guy was going going to be in a featured match on the show, the jokes and catcalls started. When Mysterio came back through the curtain after tearing down the house and putting on a clinic with Dean Malenko, everyone in that same locker room gave him the standing ovation that he deserved. And so began the WCW career of Mysterio, a once-in-a-lifetime performer who broke down size and cultural barriers while perfecting a style that would have a noted long-term influence on the business. Ray was able to create magic with anyone and everyone, whether they were a fellow luchador or a giant. One of the longest reigning cruiserweight champions ever, the only thing that could ever slow Mysterio down were his persistent knee injuries, a consequence of his uncompromisingly full throttle style. He was another who had his mask taken away from him, but even when he was going through his dungaree and devil horn phase, Ray remained a class above the rest.